What's up, Chuka? I'm going to move to the moon. needed in the family. What's up, family and friends? Welcome to the Woke Nation. Good morning, and also welcome to this new day. It's a great day, our day, our day of joy. Our day we're supposed to have fun and join our lives because we matter. We are the real thing. We are the real thing that we're supposed to be talking about. Not about God, not about all the bullshit that religion, you know, gave to us and uh, some of them society gave to us. No, not that. So, as usual, I'm encouraging you to enjoy your life wherever you are, no matter what happens to you. Like, something happened to me earlier, like, I see if I'm a Christian, I would have gone to church to give thanksgiving. Last night, uh, or let me say, yesterday when I was sleeping, I had a dream where I had two cars, so I packed one. Remember, I'm trying to come to Nigeria, actually I have two cars, so my daughter is driving one, I'm driving one. Then. I packed one car to I went to work. So coming back to work, I see that people it has it has been vandalized. The only thing that remains is the skeleton of the car and the engine. Right? So and they were about to tow the car when I came uh, I came in and they begin to you know catch the people that do the whole thing and all that so, so i say what type of thing does it mean maybe i should not leave my car where i want to leave it before travel you know i'm trying to find out what is happening what is happening so <laughs> but when i want to pack my car so instead of lo looking at the you know the the sign inside the car that show you how close you are to the car behind so I wasn't looking at it that something just carried my mind that what I, I hear is a boom, so I hit the car behind me. Say, come on. 
Then I get out, I go, it's just a little thing. I say, okay, no problem. So you see, I use it to encourage myself. I say, the worst would have happened. Maybe I would have gotten into accident or bullshit, but you see, it didn't happen, okay? So it's a dream, but there's a lot of messages there, but it depends on me. I always try to encourage myself, no matter what happened. Our people used to say, So if something happened to you, whether it's accident, whether it's your fault or not, it, it, although it's, what I'm saying is hard to uh, to do, if you if you haven't gotten to where I am, it may be very very hard. But because of what I have experienced in life, what I've went through, both life and death issue, so I've come to know how to easily encourage myself, no matter what. I try to encourage. I say, what would have happened? I don't need anyone to come pity me. You know, I don't depend on waiting for any parents. I don't procure. Oh, please come and do it now. Even death. When, when my parents reach their age to die, you won't see me saying, "Oh, I lost my parents." Because death is, is a good thing. It's not a surprise. This, we have been indoctrinated and brainwashed to see death as a bad thing and it comes as a surprise. Your elderly parents died. You are behaving like it's a new thing and you want people, oh, you didn't tell me, sorry, when my parents died, you didn't tell me RIP. You didn't give me anything. Bullshit. That's not how it's supposed to be. They have messed up a lot of things that we need to fix these things. Be the change. That change you desire or even the ch change you don't know exists. Begin to do research. You can be that change. You can, you can, we can live better life. Why do we have this lopsided life we are living? Some are rich, some are poor, some are slaves, some are masters. It's not, it's not supposed to be so. We need to do that. And then another thing I always encourage you to do is to seek the knowledge of factual truth. Seek it and spread it. Spread it free of charge. The real thing in life costs no money. And why should it cost money for us to share it? Anything that costs money to get or to share is not the right thing in life. You can argue all you want, but the right thing in life is free. It's natural. It does not cost any money. If it costs you money, it's not the right thing. All right? So understand that we have to go back to our base, which is nature. Living a natural life. So I'll title what I want to share with us. The two masters, the two masters, the two masters. These people succeeded in making us slaves. There's no one living under the sun today that we say he has freedom or she has freedom. They haven't discovered that person. Anywhere you go to have freedom, always, you know, those people, those black people now live like in the part of India that one missionary refused the, the one and don't go there. He went there, they used to and kill him. He said they don't want any external war. So you see, our ancestors were living in total freedom. But you know, the wicked ones invaded. They never let you have that freedom. And since they invaded us, the world has known no peace. There's no peace in this world and there's no freedom. The only people that will restore peace and freedom in this world are the Africans. And until they, 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 they go back to their base, to their power, to their position, nothing. You can pray all you want, you can have all the meeting all you want, it will never happen. Things just like Nigerian government, no matter what you think, some people say, oh, so long as uh, nothing has a control in Nigeria, it will never be you know? No matter who is in charge in Nigeria, it will never be well with that country. It will never, there will never be peace there. You can say, a bit, how can you be suppressing people, killing people, and think you will have peace, think you will have freedom? It's impossible. You cannot have it. You have to let people be. You have to let people go. You have to let people be themselves. Then you be yourself. You see the goat that lay down, refused to get up. He lies on his skin, not on my skin. You lay there until Nigeria split. The wars will keep happening. I keep saying that. Consult your prophets, consult your God. They can do nothing. As your miserable life is evidence. Okay, so the two masters. I've been saying this also lately about money and God being the two masters that they made us to serve. 
we are not born to serve anyone. We are not born to worship anyone or anything. We were born to live, that's explore and enjoy our lives. When you're talking about money, when you're talking about God, man made both of them. Man made them. Man made God and the money. No man was born with God. No man was born with money. Through or false, your life is, is, the, uh, is the answer to that question. So, with, with they created God and money for the slaves, to control the slaves. You're supposed to know who made money. That's why anybody that tells you God gives money, that person is ignorant of the origin of money. Is the lumbar, as I heard, they are the one that is still, when you're talking about the economy in this world, finance, finance money, they are the one that is still controlling the world. Some call it Federal Reserve today, but they are the one, the banking system, people that gave it to you, they are still running this world. Of course, even in your own village, people that work in the bank, Bank manager, <laughs> so, the money, money answers all things. Now, even your holy book say that. Why should money answer all things when you were not born with money? When you, you know, you existed before money. You are the one. We are the one that answers all things, not money. We can end money. We were living without money before they created this money that we are having today. So, uh, as usual, I also say welcome to. Bible study because I try to use the Bible. I have the knowledge of the Bible. So I use, try to use the Bible to open the eyes of our people because most of our people have the knowledge of the Bible. You know, even Muslims in Africa, they know Bible, Quran, Bible, Torah. They have the same thing in them. So everyone, most, most people in Africa know Bible and you know when you quote him from there. So it helps them to see it. I don't, I, I don't subscribe to the Bible. I don't use Bible to judge how I treat people or how I live. No, I don't. I scrutinize the Bible. I show the evil of the Bible. I show, I show the code words in the Bible. When you see the Bible, when you see Quran, when you see Torah, you are looking at slave manuals. It's written for slaves. When you're talking about slaves, you're talking about the poor masses. They are the slaves. No matter how you try, the poor masses are slaves to the rich. Okay, so that's why the slaves are not mean, but the rich are mean, because the rich can afford whatever they want, but the slaves have to work their ass off, even sometimes big, for them to make a living. So, when they, when they tell you about this money and God, I want you to always use your mind, you know, use the mind of your own. Is there anything God can do without my human being? Can money do anything without human beings? So why are we serving them? Because some people has indoctrinated us and brainwashed to serve God or money. They created these two masters and gave us choice. They didn't give, give us the, the third choice. It's only one choice or the second choice. They say either God or money. That's how the system has been built and the whole world bow before that system. You either bow before God your bar before money and some people that say they are awakened they are stopped worshiping god but they're still worshiping money so when you are truly awakened you will no longer be worshiping god and money okay you'll be trashing god and controlling money put money under you don't let money determine your happiness determine how you live your life now you can live without money okay you can migrate also go to where there is no money and still survive there yeah, animals don't use money have you seen animal using money but they tell you that you should, you know, look at the bears of the air, you know, look at the lilies. You say, yeah, God feed them. So why are you worried about life? If they don't need money and God to live, the same applies to you, okay? They are part of nature. Matthew chapter 6, 24. I'm reading from contemporary English version. It says, oh, verse, verse 24, sorry, went up. Verse 24. <laughs> Uh, he, he said, you cannot be the slave of two masters. I like this translation because it tells you the truth. Whenever you see serve, worship, it's talking to slaves. That's what the Bible is all about. You must keep the commandment of, the, of God. It's for slaves. Children, obey your parents. It's for slaves. Fathers, do not uh, uh, get your children angry. It's slaves. Train up the children in the way they should go. It's for slaves. They made those things for slaves. Free people don't need any commandment. They don't need any law to live. 
they live like human beings and they enjoy their life. He said, you cannot be slave of two masters. You will like one more than the other or to be more loyal to one than the other. He didn't say you will not be loyal to Buddha, but you will be more loyal. See? Yeah, so that's why if you have God, money, don't let money go. Uh, you have money, don't let God go. But they tell you you cannot serve both of them. So you cannot like more. You, I mean, you have to like one more than the other. Not that you won't like both of them. Uh, so you, you cannot be loyal. I mean, you have to be more loyal to one than the other. That doesn't mean you won't be loyal to two of them. See, slaves are loyal to two of them. Okay, you serve the master because you might, what the master will give to you. The same thing they tell you, serve God because of God's blessing, which is bullshit. So if I have to serve God for God to bless me, fuck that God. I don't need that God. If that God loves me, I don't need to serve him for him to bless me. And if you say God created me, why do I need to serve God for God to bless me? Even your book didn't tell you that when God created Adam and Eve, he asked them to serve him. He never asked them that. He never asked them to worship him. Was he blessing them? No, they were in the garden. He told them to dress it. You provide for yourself. But you know, they begin to make up religion, created all that bullshit. He said, You cannot serve both God and the money. So that's what they said. Okay, so the holy book is slave manual, it is compiled and or written for the control of the slaves, which, as I said earlier, the poor masses by the slave owners. Slave owners are the ones that made up the Bible. They compile it or they wrote it. They call people, pay people, say, okay, you are, do this. You are the scribes. You have to do this. You have to come up with this. I want to control these people. And they, they are the few. The few are the ones that are still controlling this world. There's no God in the sky that is controlling this world. It's the few. You can call it them the judges or the rich. They are the one that is controlling this world. And they are the real enemies of the masses. The devil is not our enemy. Satan is not our enemy because devil and Satan does not exist. Demons are not our enemies because they don't exist. The few that is controlling the world, they are the real enemies of the people. They are the ones that, that don't want us to have peace. They are sponsoring all this war, you know, throwing us off balance and making us begin to beg for food look at what is happening in yemen today you know and you believe oh there is god and people are serving god and yet how about those people dying god cannot do anything nothing see how people are talking about coronavirus now anybody talking about any other thing see even travel now has been crippled all those things so think about that it is the enemies they are the ones they have the money they have the weapon and they're doing all these things inflicting unnecessary pain, unnecessary suffering on, on all of us. So people who are under authority, the government, you know, they are, of course, you know, they are the slave owners. They are slave owners. People. So, I mean, people in government, they put us under the authority, but they are the authority. You call them the authority. Some, some, sometimes I see some educated fools. They say, from, from which authority are you speaking on? Which source? What is your source? The universe is my source. I think after my, somebody watched uh, my video yesterday, I think on YouTube, he said, uh, uh, what is the source of the sun and the moon? I wanted to reply, I said, let me, because I've been saying that. Of course, the source, you want to know the source. The same source you have, what is your own source? Our ancestors. Yeah, when you're talking about who created heaven and earth, our ancestors. That's what we must begin to pre present before them. You say, no, you don't believe that. I ask you, then who created or who built the great pyramids and the great things? See, today, no, the world don't know how they came into existence. Or they with some of them say it was aliens that built it. No, our ancestors did. Just as the heaven and earth are in existence, they also have been in existence. Okay, so we are the builders, we are the wise builders. We create, we don't need any God to build anything. All we need is our imagination and our hands. We imagine it, we come up with that idea. Boom, boom. We begin to bring them into reality. So the, the, these people put people on that authority, which you call government. 
and everyone under government, everyone under authority is a slave. That's why you obey the law. If they say slaves obey, regardless whether the, 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 those in authority are harsh or good, no slaves, you must obey the law. The light is red. You have to stand by, uh, stand, uh, stop at light. But they come with siren. Wait, wait, wait. They break the law and go wherever they're going. And you say they are serving you. No, you are the slave. They are the masters. Okay, so slaves must submit. You must submit whether you like it or not. Of course, you don't have money to fight. You do have money to pay rich lawyers that can save you from your case. No, so that's why you see the slaves in prison. Prison is... It's a slave yard. It's like, you know, where they put slaves to force them to walk and all that. So, and also when you're talking about the Lord, you're talking about God. God is the Lord. So, remember, they created God and the money. So, they created God. God is the Lord. Lord means slave owner or owner. So, somebody, um, owner. Number one, how do you come up, up with somebody, one person, owing something? Others don't 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 own. So that's how they created that ish, uh, idea of God. God is an abstract term, abstract word that is useless until you give it your belief power. You are the one that gives God power. God is is a religious term. It has nothing to do with reality. It has nothing to do with what you can do. God gives you no power. God gives you no strength. God gives you nothing. Whatever you have is either given to you by your fellow human being. Or you acquire it, you work for it. It is either gift from your not gift from God, not gift from any devil, any devil or demon. No, it is it is by by man's effort. You know, you have a woman be, give it to you, or you work for it. So God is the Lord. God is the slave master. Okay, so that that's why the the, the religion created God. Or, I mean, they created sin. Let me put it this way. The religion created sin, which is law and the commandments. There are sin, laws and commandments. Religion created sins to make people slaves of God. They created sin. Oh, if you sin, you have sin. Then they tell you God has paid for that sin, for you to be his slave. So you are bought. Okay, let me show you how they say it in Exodus chapter 20, 2 and 3. He said, I am the Lord. They, they say, God speaking, right? He say, I am the Lord. You are God. So God is the Lord. The one who brought you out of Egypt. He says, to show you what he has done. I brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. Now you are my slaves. Do not worship any God except me. Do you see that? I am the Lord. You are God. I save you from being slave. For you to be my slave that is not freedom there's no religious person that is free if you worship god if you obey god if you believe in god you are a slave of that god you are not free that's why there's something you must do you must have to follow those rules and the rules are for fools <laughs> So for those of you that call me, oh, the fool say there is no God. So you call me fool. If you read your Bible, but you were Paul, you are our apostle, say he's a fool for Christ. So why are you calling me fool as if he's a bad thing? When apostle, you are mighty apostle, say he's a fool. You can read it there. Say he's a born servant. He's a slave of Christ. He's a fool for Christ. Okay. So the, the religious people are the ones that created sin. How they created sin by establishing those laws and the commandments, telling you they are laws of God. You know, you are Adam, your first, your first parents sinned, uh, so it rubbed off on you. But when God has uh, sent His Son to forgive you, He did, uh, did not rub off on you. You have to repent, confess your sin, and stop sinning. If He has taken away the sin, why, did, why, why are you telling me to stop sinning? There shouldn't be sin anymore if Jesus has died for our sins. Nobody should be held responsible for committing any sin because the blood of Jesus in Son has made us free. So I am free from sin. If Jesus has died for me, why are you calling me a sinner? I'm not a sinner. I was not born in sin and I'm not a sinner. So let us see verse 7. For you to see that he says, God, another reason God is, he said, 
do not misuse my name. Who you be that I will not misuse? Number one, why, why should I mis misuse your name in the first place? If when you read all those commandments of God, it says mess or it's nonsense. And that's why you see we take their name as we we are taking our slave master's name. But our slave masters we will not take our own name to show that they are masters over us. My name is uh, uh, my first name is Ah Mefune. My middle name is Shedrak, or uh, my baptismal name, or my English name, Shedrak, or uh, baptismal, because Shedrak is not English name. <laughs> but you don't know, it's not Christian name. Shedrak is not Christian name, and it's not even biblical name. It's Babylonian name, the present day Iraq, as they said, okay? And that land belonged to us, Africa. Okay. <laughs> Many of you don't know. When they tell me, okay, change your name now, I just laugh. But as my ancestors are still calling me that name. Myself is still calling me that name. <laughs> so I laugh. But no matter who name it is, I am above that name. Name shouldn't define who you are. I see some people, that my one of my friends on Facebook, Samuel, the Yoruba guy, I see what time they're bombarding him. I say, let me see if he can take it. Because they are, oh, they used to bombard, they're still doing that to me. Oh, if you what you're saying is true, change your name now. Change your name. I say, fool, you don't know what name, what is name? I can change my name a million times. It doesn't, you know how many names I've appeared in this world? Many names. <laughs> But the one I bear outside the world and where I was locked up. You know how many names I have bear? A lot. I have a lot of names. Say, so do not misuse my name. I am the Lord. That's I'm the slave master who made you. I am the Lord your God, and I will punish anyone who misuse my name. That is don't you don't you see that is slave master speaking? I will punish anyone who misuse my name. So you see the parents telling their children, don't misuse his name, he's the slave master. I don't want them to cut off your hand. I don't want them to punish you. Just obey. He saved you from slavery for you to become his own slave. And he said you should have no other God beside him. And you should not misuse his name. That is God for you. They created sin for them to make you slaves of God. If you, oh, they tell you you're already sin, you are born in sin, so you have that guilt. Okay, God, please have mercy on me. I don't want to die, I don't want to go to hell. You are not going to any hell. Let me show you this before I post it again. They tell you in Hebrew chapter 9 27, if I'm still correct, I used to quote it often a lot when I go for evangelism. He say It is appointed unto man once to die, after that, what judgment. It's a lie. It's a New Testament lie. Because in the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 15, they say God said to Abraham, you are going to your ancestors. There is no judgment day. There is no anything judgment. It's New Testament bullshit. They made up. When you read about judgment, or like in the book of Psalm chapter 82, he say, God judge among the gods. <laughs> God, I judge among the gods. Judgment is what happened now. That's why you see even Christians or Muslims, they are killing people for doing wrong thing. So if there is judgment day, why are you punishing anyone for any wrong? If there is judgment day that we all will appear before the great white throne to answer, then why are you still saying some people are chewing, chewing gun, they will go to hell? You don't know who will go to hell yet. Let's wait until the day of judgment. Why are you telling people to repent? Let them leave. You are not God. Let God convert them. Jesus said he's the one that would draw sheep until he said, just go and preach. He did not say, go and tell people to repent. He never said that. He said, he said tell them. <laughs> Jesus himself, he said to people, repent. But he said, he said, go and tell them the gospel. Tell them the good news. That's what he asked you to tell them. Then he said he was walking with them, confirming the word with signs, following him. He is supposed to be the one drawing people. John chapter 10 verse 16. Not you. You see, if I be lifted high, I will draw men unto me. Why are you the one drawing people? Because you are drawing people to your church, not to Jesus of the Bible. You are drawing people to your religion, not to Jesus of the Bible, because that Jesus does not exist. You cannot draw anyone. That's why you are doing the drawing. You go evangelism, then you do follow up. And you will say, God, praise the Lord, so winning. God has made it. Which God? <sighs> Let me show you how they make you slave of God again. That's Old Testament, in the New Testament. Rom Romans chapter 6. Mm. 
20 to 22, slaves of God. Never you be a slave of any God or any man. He said, when you were slaves of sin, you see, that one that created the sin, make you slaves of sin. So you are guilty now by default. You are guilty by birth. Just because you are born, you are born in sin. Say, you didn't have to please God. But what good did you receive from the things you did a lot? <laughs> All you have to show for them is your shame, quit shame, and they lead to death. You are the one that created that shame, that sin, that shame, and that death. All of us die natural death. All of us, whether you die in an accident or everyone must die. It's a natural thing. So it's not a bad thing as they put, put it. Verse 22. He said, now you have been set free from sin and you as God's slave. This will make you holy and will lead you to eternal life. You see, it makes you God's slave. You accept Jesus Christ, you become God's slave. You are saved, you used to be slaves of sin. Now you are slaves of God, so you are not free. You are not free. That's why they tell you, he say it makes you do what? This will make you holy. And it will lead you to eternal life. It will never lead you to freedom. They can, they know you can never. You say, I'm holy. You begin to dress like stupid people. Then uh, eternal life. I will go to heaven. Or in the next one, I will live eternally. Those things does not exist. It can never happen. So that's how they made it. They created sin to make you slaves of God. They tell you you were slaves of sin. That's why you are doing what they say you should not do. That one that says you should not do that too. But if you also give, give them your own law, they will not do that. Christians don't do Muslims' law. Muslims don't do Christians' law. The same way they don't do Africans' law. So that, that's, they created sin. Sin. They created sin to make you slaves of God. Let that sink deep into you. You are not a sinner. You are human. You are not a sin. You are not born in sin. You are born in skin through sex. Not through God or anything. That's God. God is the Lord. They created sin to make you slaves of God. How long will you be slaves of God? There's no freedom in God. They only tell you holiness and eternal life. Those things are lies. There's no such thing as holiness and there's no such thing as eternal life. But the life you have, that is the eternal life. God cannot give you eternal life. Jesus can. You already have eternal life. They make that promise because they taught you away from your truth. How about money? Money also is the Lord. You already heard about people. God is their money. Of course. The preachers of gospel, God is their money. Those churches that are building houses, God is their money. Money is God. Is their God, I mean. The God they truly worship is money. They use God, invisible God, to deceive you and collect the real God from you. They know you have the real God. That God in heaven does not exist. So they tell you, no, you see that God, he will bless you if you bring this God. You shall have no other God before this God. But this God, if you bring it to this God, this God will bless you. And but that God does not exist. They deceive you. Money is the Lord. That's slave buying power. Of course, you know that slaves, uh, money can be used to buy slaves. Uh, according to the Bible, they use money to buy slaves because their God like it. You know, God wants it to be slaves. Like First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23, what does he say? He said, you are bought of a price, a great price, by God. He said, do not be slave of men. Because God is a jealous God. If God has bought you as a slave, he don't expect you to serve any man or any other God. That is God. So money is used to buy slaves. And also, slaves labor to make money to buy what they need. Slaves, at least, when they labor and make some money, they can have a little taste of what the slave master is enjoying. You know that, right? They see people labor everywhere. Many of us are in our property today because we want to 
kill poverty in our family. We want to bring money. Our government is not working in Africa. They are not helping us. And blah, blah. Everybody is, you know, that's why I don't blame anyone that is, you know, looting the treasury and all that. Of course, it will continue until we fix the whole system and begin to live like human beings. People are laboring just to make money. Just to make money to buy food. They are no longer making food. So we, they taught us away from our truth. We think we cannot survive without money anymore. We are laboring to make money to buy food and things. Things we can make, we are no longer making them. We are, one, we are running to make money. So money is what we worship. Worshiping, we need, when you get money, you get things. See, they tell you without money or without God, you are nothing in this life. Without God, without money in this life, you are nothing in this life. But ask yourself, were you born with God or with the money? No. If you came out of the, your mother's vagina without God and without money, what makes you think you are nothing without them? Think, 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 my people. They have lied to us. See, majority of all we are laboring is to just to make money. At least to buy what we need or buy something uh, food food we are no longer crazy. some of us have land we uh, the land we have now is for house we want to build a house everything go buy buy somewhere you are complaining about uh, plastic rice very soon we'll be eating everything plastic <laughs> just to stay alive so uh, understand that the program the program is to make you love money and hate God, or love God and hate money. So you believe without God, you, 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 you miss heaven after death, or without God, you suffer uh, strange things in this life, or suffer in hellfire. That's the first thing they want you to know. So you, you see people now having that belief in them, they think, oh, without God, you know, life will be miserable for me. Without God, I, can't, I don't know what I will be today. They keep saying, without God, without God. Have you seen this God? No. What can this God do for you in reality? Nothing. But yes, they keep saying, without God, I, I know my life will be in shambles. How oh, that bullshit. That's what they program. They program us. They condition us to think that way. Without God, you need God. So you have to go to temple. You have to go to church. You have to go to mosque. You have to go to whatever they say God is. Though you believe that God is with you, right where you are, yet you have to go somewhere. Because they want you to believe and live as if without God, life is meaningless. It's not true. Life is meaningful without God. See, look at I'm the example. I'm living without God. I'm living better than I used to when I was a Christian. I'm no longer living in bondage. The second thing the, the program makes you to believe is that without money, life is meaningless and miserable. It's not so not true. It's not true. Without money, life is good. Without money, you can you can enjoy your life. We can build better things even without money. But they say no, you can't, because they have deceived us. But remember, it is still people that are making those things that you think money can, have, can, 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 can buy or money can afford. It is people that are making those things. Without people, those things are meaningless. Without people, those things are useless. So how can your life be used, meaningless and miserable because you don't have money? But many people have believed that. That's why they can defraud you. They can kill you because of money. They don't really care about you. They can kill you because of money. But they forgot that they will also be killed or they die. All of us, that is our... It is not fate. That is our order. It is life and death. Death and life. Life and death. Death and life. Come on, rap. Death and life. Life and death. <laughs> sing, sing along. <laughs> <laughs> understand that when you are living your life is not what they said it should be no you have to find out how to live your own life understand 
All they want from you is for you to be a slave. That's all they want for you. All that God bullshit or money bullshit. They just want you to. All they want from us is to be slaves. Serving God or money. That is what you call politics and what religion. Politics or religion. That's all they want. God and money serves the same purpose. They have one agenda to make you good slave. To keep you away from your truth, from your great potentials. You have that ability to live without God and money. You have that ability to live above God and money, but they don't want you to see that ability. They want you to see your wantonness. They want you to see your lack. They want you to see your wretchedness. Mm. Say you are wretched. That grace save you. No, you, you are never wretched. They are the one that plan it. They program things to be like that. And you think that is how it should be. It is not. It is time you begin to live as free person. They want you to keep living like slaves depending on God or money. They want you to be slaves of God or slaves of money. But you have the, 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 the choice to break free from both of them. Trash money and control, I mean trash God and control money. Put money where money belongs. Money belongs under your feet. You have to know that you need not to serve anything. You need not to serve anyone, but take care of yourself and the others. We were not born to serve. We were born to care. When you live, the same way you care for yourself about yourself, but remember, you comes first. You are the first in your life or in your affairs. You comes first. Your happiness first. You still arguing or maybe trying to say, I don't know what I'm saying. I ask you this question again. Who is printing money? It's not your God. There's no printing machine, printing machine money in the, in the heaven. God cannot give you money. It is still the political leaders that are printing the money. Who is printing the money? Who is making money? Political leaders. You say, yeah, yeah. I can ask you again, who is speaking for God? Religious leaders. Have you seen any God who show up and speak for himself? No. See, man is in charge, not God. Man is in charge, not money. I need no master over me. I need no master over my family. I need no master over my affairs. If I have any master, it's temporary. Just to make money. <laughs> but I can live without it. Of course, I can I've done that before. I need no master over me, but it can be forced on me. That's what I mean. I said, you know, temporary. Yes, but a master can be forced on me, just as they force God on us. They force money on us. But I have the choice. I will not remain under it. I resist, not repent. I research, not repent. I live human not worship. I live human, not serve. Understand that slaves worship, but free men reign in life. Free men live free life. Freely. That's why I say I was born to reign. It's not a new word to me. If you see my old books, you will see where I read them boldly. Born to reign. You can see them on some of my posts. I was born to reign. That's me. I was not born to worship. I was not born to serve. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. You are stupid singing that. Here I am to reign. Here I am to live. Not to bow before any God. Not to worship any God, not to believe in any God. I was born to reign. I was born to explore and enjoy life. That's what it means to reign. 
true knowledge. I was born to trust God. I was born to control money. I was born to live human. One to close with this. If you are, maybe you are about to go to bed, go with this, or you're going anywhere, begin to ponder on this word that you are more important than God and the money. Don't let anyone make you their slaves anymore. You are not a slave of God. You are not a slave of money. You are human being. You have the abilities to live your life to the fullest. Live your life fulfilled. Live your life greatly, wonderfully, majestically without God and the money. And you can. Peace. <laughs> Ekerem ba ina ha